Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Mobox Graphics and today we are going to model this sci-fi crate. We are also going to add the textures and the lighting to this so you can replicate the whole scene as you see it right now. So let's get started in Cinema 4D by creating a pyramid object to start off with. Let's make the pyramid just a bit taller, so that is the center value. Let's make it something like 230 centimeters. Now as it is we can make this editable, so we can make adjustments to the model. And we're going in the point mode, so we can select all of the points. You can do that by pressing Command and A or Control and A on Windows. And we're going to use the bevel tool. So you can right click or press M and S on the keyboard. And we're going to have the subdivisions set to 0. And just click and drag to get the bevel. Let's say we want something with a round number, so 60 centimeters will do. So that is the base shape of the crate. Okay, so when that is done, we can go ahead and go in the edge mode. And we're going to select all the edges this time. So again with Ctrl or Command and A. And we're going to use the bevel tool once more. But this time we want more subdivisions and a smaller offset. So let's increase the subdivisions to 6. And because the offset is still set at 60 centimeters, it's a bit glitchy right now. So let's first off start with limiting this. And we're also going to decrease the offset. So let's go with something just like uh, 4 centimeters, for example. So we have these nice rounded edges. Okay, let's deselect everything inside of the move tool. And we're going to create a loop cut. So we can press K and L or right click and select the loop cut. And we're going to make a cut right at the center. If you use the loop cut tool and you don't see the whole line being wrapped around the model, there are two things you can do with a model. First of all you can go in the point mode and select all the points and press U and O on the keyboard to optimize everything. So that means everything will be connected again, if it wasn't. But in this case you can see it's still not working. So another thing we can do is going in the loop cut options and make sure you have the stop cut at N gone deselected. So with that being disabled we can try again. Let's just make a cut somewhere in the middle. Let's scroll up again and we're going to set the offset to 50%. With that done, we can go ahead and select it by pressing U and L on the keyboard. That selects the loop selection tool, which you cannot find in the right click menu. So with this, let's select it. And we created the center cut, so we can make more cuts towards the side of it. So this is an easy reference for us. If we use the bevel tool and set the bevel mode to solid, we can create a duplicate at every side, which is very easy to create a symmetrical topology. So for this first one, let's make it for example, 8 centimeters wide, and we're going to reselect the center one and create a new bevel, but this time let's say 4 centimeters. Now, with this all done, we are going to select the polygons at the center, so that's all of this, and we're going to use the inner extrusion tool. You can stay at one subdivision and just click and drag. So, this is where the door will be. We are going to create a second smaller inner extrusion, so we get this rim around the door. Okay, so now we can go ahead and use the loop selection tool again, U and L, and try to select this rim at the outside. We can already use the extrusion tool, right click, extrude, or press D on the keyboard, and click and drag to make it sink in a bit. Let's say we're going with something like minus 2 centimeters. I think that looks good. Now at the bottom here we have these polygons, so we can select the two middle ones, or we can also optimize the topology a bit more and just select the middle row. You can do that by just double clicking this line or using the loop selection tool. And we're going to delete this, but if we delete this we get a gap, so let's undo that. We want to dissolve this, which means that it gets rid of all the stuff inside of it without losing the shape. So right click and we're going to dissolve. Okay. So back in the polygon mode, we can select this polygon and you can see the axis of the move tool is being nicely aligned with the object. So it is not going straight up because that would mess things up. So let's undo that and make sure this is deselected and just move it up a bit. So that's the handle to open the door. Now we can go back in the edge mode and we're going to select all the corner edges. So at every corner we need two edges, so let's do that.
But make sure you skip these at the handle, because these need a different kind of bevel. So with that done, let's go back to the bevel tool again. And we're going to set the bevel mode back to chamfer. And right now, with the 4 centimeters and the 6 subdivisions, it's actually quite alright. So let's just stick with that. Now we can do these at the handle. So let's select these four. And we're just going to click and drag until we have something that looks nice. Now we can go ahead and select these edges, the ring of edges, around the door and the frame. So we're going to do that again with the loop selection tool. And for the second one here, it's a bit more difficult to get the right one. So just try a couple of times by moving the cursor. So make sure you have the right one selected. It may take a couple of tries. Let's go back to the bevel tool. And we're going to make a very small bevel on this one. Let's go with just one centimeter. If you have something like this going on, it means the bevel is a bit too strong. So let's undo that. Let's go back. And I'm just going to manually click and drag. Until you reach the limit. So let's stay under that. Alright, so that is the base shape already. We're going to create a small detail at the side here, which I think would look nice. So I want this bottom portion to be usable for us. So we can go ahead and use the knife tool by pressing K and K or right click and select the line cut tool. Make sure you have visible only still selected and you're going to start from this point and make it end at that point. So now we have this bottom polygon. Let's go in the polygon mode and select it. And we're going to make an inner extrusion. Let's go to something quite small like this. And we're going to move this one down a bit. So this will hold the small gaps we're going to create. Let's go ahead and select the loop cut tool again by pressing K and L. And for this one it is quite useful to restrict the cuts to the selection. So let's enable that. And I'm just going to randomly click anywhere. And we're going to increase the number of cuts to 5. Okay. Let's go out of this. And with these still selected, we're going to press I on the keyboard or right click to get the extrude inner tool. And we're going to disable the preserve groups option. Otherwise, if we scale this, it will just use it as one big block. But we want every part to be extruded individually. So let's disable this and click and drag. It doesn't need to be that much, like this. And we're just going to delete these polygons. So we have these holes right now. Let's go ahead and select the top edges of every hole. And with the selected and using the move tool, we can just hold Ctrl or Command on the keyboard and click and drag it to the side. So we have a new polygon at the top. Let's also use the scale tool and scale it on the Z axis, which is the blue handle. So it is a bit more angled inwards and we're also going to move these edges down a bit. So that's a simple way to get this kind of look. Okay, so that's the detail at the side. So that's most of the model. Now we can continue with some of the materials already. So let's go ahead and create the first one. And this one will be quite simple because we will just focus on the reflections. So let's go in the reflectance tab. And we're going to add a background layer. In here everything at the default settings is almost right. Let's just decrease the roughness a bit to just 3% or something. Let's scroll down and open the layer Fresnel options. And we're going to set the Fresnel to dielectric. That should make it this kind of very shiny plastic look. So that's an easy one. Also a good one to remember. Let's drag it on top of there. And if you would render, it doesn't look that shiny. And that is because there is no environment or no light around it. So let's go ahead and start off with creating an infinite floor. So create a floor object. And we're also going to create a background object. It's also a good time to move the crate on top of the floor. And let's create a simple material for the floor and the background, which will just be a white color. You don't have to make it exactly pure white to this side. You can also keep it a bit more gray. That makes it a bit more natural. Let's drag it on the floor and the background. If you render, you can see we have this edge right here. So to make this an infinite floor, let's right click on the floor object, go to Cinema 4D tags and use the compositing tag. And in here, we can select the compositing background option. So if you render again, you can see it is totally seamless. Right now, it looks like it is just floating in an empty space. So let's go to the render settings and add an effect, which will be the ambient occlusion. Now, if you render, you should have this contact shadows at the bottom. 
which already makes it look a bit more realistic. But the contact shadows are a bit strong for my liking. So let's go to the gradient right here. And we're going to make this just a softer gray. So that makes it less intense. So the shadows are not as hard at the small parts. So that's good. Let's continue with some lighting. First of all, we're going to create a first area light. And down here you can already set the shadow type to an area shadow as well, which is the most realistic one. Let's make this area light a bit bigger. So scale it up. Something like this. And we're going to move this to the front of the crate and move it up as well. And let's also move it a bit to the side like this. Let's also make this a bit more strong on the intensity. So just 110%. And we're going to make a copy of this and move it towards the left side. Let's also rotate this just to be sure. And you're also going to make this a bit smaller. So the shadows will be a bit stronger if you make it smaller and a bigger light will make the shadows softer. So let's move the camera to this side and take a render to see how it looks. Okay, I think that looks nice, but we can make this pop just a bit more by adding an ambient light. So that is just the default light object. And down here, let's select the ambient illumination option, but let's make it less strong. So just 40%, for example. And now the scene is a bit brighter and more fresh, but we still have all the other stuff going on like it was before. There are two more details we want to add to the model. First of all, that's the ring around the crate. And second of all, it's the number at the front here. Let's start with the easy one, which is the ring around it. So that's just a very simple thing. We can use a disk object. And we're just going to raise this up 0.1 centimeters. So it's on top of the floor. We're going to scale this up. And let's go into the settings and make this just a bit smoother by adding some rotation segments. Something like 100 will do. Let's make this editable so we can use the loop cut tool again. And we're going in the edge mode for example. And create a loop cut right at the side. So we have this new ring of polygons which we want to keep. So let's go ahead and select the polygons we don't want and just delete them. Okay, so we have a ring right now. Let's create a new material for this, which will be a luminance material. So deselect the color, enable the luminance. And this is just very simple. Any color you like, I'm going with orange. Okay, so that is done. Okay, so now we are going to move to the number at the front here. There are multiple ways to do this, but a nice and really useful technique to do this is doing it with a material. So let's create a new one. We're going to set up the color first, so that's the same one. Just orange. Okay. In the reflectance tab you can also add the background layer with a dielectric Fresnel on it. So it's also shiny like the front of the crate. And now we will go into the alpha channel and that is where the magic of the number will be happening. So in here let's add a texture which you can find under effects and the spline effect. I know it sounds strange but in here you can add some type to this. So let's open this texture by clicking the thumbnail. First of all we can go ahead and set the text to 01 or anything you like. You can also notice that the bottom of the number is being cut off so let's change the Y offset to for example 95% which raises it up a bit. We are also going to make sure we have the caps enabled but also the fill enabled so it's a full shape. You cannot see it right here but it will end up like we want it to in the end. So let's see what this gives if we add this to the model. So right now it's going all over the place. So we need some further adjustments. First of all with this tag still selected Let's change the projection from UVW mapping to flat. Okay, so that's a bit better. Now we can go ahead and use the texture mode and just use the scale tool to scale it down. But you can see we are still repeating the texture. So let's go back to the tag and disable the tiling option. So we only have one of them. Let's scale this down even more and we can just move it around like we wanted to. You can also notice we have the texture at the back here, which doesn't matter because we will split the object at a later stage. So let's go back to the model mode and we're going to select our pyramid or the box and let's select all the polygons which are included with the door. So that may be a bit tedious. I recommend using the loop selection tool for this in the polygon mode and just select the rings of polygons. Some of them may be a bit more difficult than the other ones. Let's also make sure we have the center ones selected as well. 
and also go to the corners and make sure all of these are also selected. So now we can split this front part from the whole body. So right click and we're going to use the split option. This gives us a second object, but don't be confused. The one we have still selected is the original. So we already have the polygon still selected. So we can just hit delete to get rid of those. And we still have that second object, which is the door. So let's rename this straight away. I'm also going to hide the lights. So it's a bit more easy to see what is going on. One more thing I would like to do is adding some kind of different material to the inside of the box and also this ring around here. So let's create the material first, which will just use a color on it. Let's go with something just dark gray. We're going to select the polygons we want to be recolored. I also see I missed a bit right here, but if you moved a bit slower than me, it should be just fine. Okay, let's drag the material on the selection. So now we have the black rim. We're also going to select the inside of this box, or actually, it can be even easier, I think, if we just select all of it, drag the material on top of it, and we're just going to set the side to back. So that means it only projects it on the inside and not the outside. So that's quite easy. Let's reveal the door again and render so we can see the full model. So that looks nice already. Now we can move on to the last bit and that is just adding some dynamics to this. So first of all, I would like to put something inside of this crate. It can be anything, so I'm just going to use the content browser with the search function. So let's go with the fire extinguisher. Double click to add it to the scene. Going to hide the door again so we can see it better. And it can be scaled up a bit, like this. So now we want the door to pop off when the animation starts. So we need to add some dynamic tags to this. First of all, let's add a collider body tag to the box. So everything should be fine by default. We will check in just a moment if it works. Let's do the same thing with the fire extinguisher. So a collider body. But in this case, we need to go in the collision tab and set the shape to a static mesh because it's not moving, it is static. And we also want to increase the size of this to just one centimeter, which creates some kind of invisible wall around it, you could say. So it doesn't intersect on the small parts right here. Okay. So now the final thing we need to do is revealing the door again and adding a simulation tag on this as well. But this one will be a rigid body, so it kind of falls down when the animation starts. So let's try and play the animation to see what happens. Okay, so you can see we still need to add some tags on the floor as well. Uh, let's go in here and add a collider tag as well. Play again. Okay, so you can see it is not going inside of the crate. It is just trying to see this as a full object still. So let's go in the collider tag of the box. And in here under the collision, we also want to set this to a static mesh. So let's try again. Okay, so now it's falling inwards, but it is still not intersecting with the fire extinguisher. So let's go to this tag. And we want to do one more thing. And that is setting the inherit tag to apply to children, which is because this is a group of objects and not just one object. And we want all the collisions to happen on all these small parts. So let's try again. You can already see it is going a bit slower, but it is working. One more thing we can do to the door here is making sure it is closed at the back as well, so it's not paper thin. Let's go into polygon mode and just right click and use the close polygon tool and click to have it be a full shape. You can also go in here and set some frictions and the bounce to this. So it's totally up to you what you want to do with this. If you want to see the specific values I used in my animation at the beginning of the video, you can download that file on our Patreon page. Also, if you created anything with this tutorial, we are very happy to see what you made by sharing it with us on Instagram or Twitter. And with that being said, I hope you learned something new today and I will see you in the next video.